tutorial is going to be about two-point perspective. We've already covered one-point perspective. In two-point perspective, it just seems like you usually see that. For example, this was in the Plaka area in Athens just recently. And when I saw this, I went, wow, what a perfect example of two-point perspective. Because see, one of the things you look for are these corners, corners, corners. And this side of the corner is going down to the horizon here. And this side is going down to the horizon here. So every one of these has two points that it's going to. And I did draw a horizon line here. And we'll get into the specifics of this lesson in a minute. I thought I would just point out these background pictures. These are both oldies but goodies. This was from a trip to Bulgaria years ago. And I remember sitting across a river on, in a restaurant looking at them. But see, all of these, this, this corner goes to a point off the picture. And then this corner goes to a point off the picture this way. So that's what you look for. You look for the corners. Over here we have a graveyard in Ireland. And this one goes all the way back to the 90s. Um, I was just thinking about Ireland. So when I saw this picture, I thought, ah, oh, it's perfect. But again, here's the corner. This side's going off this way. This is coming down to the horizon. This is coming down to the horizon. If you could see the bottom, it would be going up to the horizon. So you look for the corners, the corners. Even each gravestone has a corner, each monument. First thing you do is look for that corner. And then the other thing that you do immediately is look for that horizon line. So let's take a look at what we have here. This is our horizon line, and at some point here, these lines are going to converge up to, haha, -ha, right there, up to that horizon line. So there's one point, and then if we, now there's your, that's eye level. And when I say horizon line, we can't see the horizon line in this picture. It's way beyond this hillside. So now we have to project our eye level. And this is the eye level. So starting here, eye level. Now watch. Aha! We're pretty close. Each one of these lines, those two, that one, that one, all of these now are going to this line right here. Now once you identify the corner, Let's take this corner right here. Once we identify that corner, then these are going to go to a point on the horizon. There, there, and see the top of all these steps? They keep getting straighter and straighter until we get to the eye level. Everything at eye level is straight. And then, then, whoops, that's not good. Then we're going to go above, and now each of these lines is going to match up with with this point right here. So once you understand that basic concept, establish your eye level and then figure out where those points are. Now isn't it interesting that this point is way over here and this point is much closer. So a lot of people think those points are within your picture frame, but they aren't. They're almost always off the picture frame. So we should be able to draw this now same way, get this lined up. Now the first thing I want to do is identify my horizon line. And I've got to start thinking about where do I want to start. I'm looking for this corner right here. I know it's above the horizon line. It's approximately a third of the way. And it's, I don't know, it's about, about there. And then that's going to come down to the other horizon line, and this is going to come this way. And then we've got that chimney coming up, or whatever it is, it's probably the altar. That's going to come up here, and the inside of that, this is maybe that, the inside of that is about this deep. Now all these lines that are going up like this are parallel to the edge of the paper, not tipping that's three-point perspective when it's going up to a point up in the sky. This is two-point. 
These are going to a converging line out to a point on the, pers on the horizon line, but these are all parallel. So you do have to keep that in mind. And now this will be a little steeper than this line. See, it's coming down. And then we're going to come, come down here, the thickness. And then this is going to go up somewhere in here. I never worry about it being too perfect. Kind of like imperfection myself. <laughs> and so then we've got the building, the top of the, the building here. Let's not make it too tall. And that point of the building there comes out somewhere in here. So we'll go up there and come down. And this is pretty steep now. It's getting pretty high. It's going to come in about here. And this is going to come down. There's that thing on the building here. And I love anything like foliage. Now one of the things I frequently see, people draw foliage like a straight line. Don't even think about it. Think just always make it little broken shapes. Look for the irregularity. It goes up, it goes down, and it goes kind of off the picture here. There's another little tree shape coming in here. So foliage is going to save what could be a very boring picture here. <laughs> and here we have a little renegade breaking over that shape. We love those renegades. Even if they're not there, I put them in. Okay, now this side of the building's coming down and it's dropping. And then it goes off the page here somewhere before that tip. And this is all going to be dark foliage. And then look for this interesting shape. See, instead of leaving this like a lollipop, I frequently will come in and just do a little broken shape in there too. Okay, so now we're thinking about this is coming down. These are kind of at an angle. And now we've got this line going up too that point on the horizon and oh we have this lovely foliage in here I love this now we have another point here so we've got this point now I'm looking for this point right here and it lines up pretty much with this so I'll put it right about right about here this side's gonna go down this way this side's gonna go down this way And now we've got these renegade foliage coming up over the top. Love that. And breaking out into here. And see, anytime you have a lollipop, oh boy, there's nothing worse. Nothing worse. We gotta think about some. Think what we'll do. Now there's there's another point corner here. The corners are really important. Now this corner is coming out and look what we have here another corner and this corner is coming let's see this is about in the middle so I always like to determine how long that's going to be and then we've got this nice little bell tower and somewhere about in the middle, this is going to come down, and we're going to see that gate. So this corner, maybe about here, and we're going to have this line going up this way. So this is going to go up a little bit and down another corner. See this? It's going this way, and it's going this way. Then there's a break going to come down and that side's going that way and it's kind of a nice deep comes all the way down to here and now we get to erase a few lines this happens all the time you put the lines in if they're not right that's what erasers are for I love it now we have a door in here And 
can see though that door is going to continue, this gate I should call it, is going to continue up here and then this is going to turn into that nice thick tower there and up we go. So this is coming along. Now we've got this now we've got this one down here and that one kind of starts about here. And now we're very close to our horizon line. Look at that. This is going to go across and come down. And both sides are going to be almost straight. At the horizon line, that line would be straight. Whereas up here it goes down and down. Here it goes straight. And now we're going to have some fun. I love steps. Steps are about my favorite thing. We have this lovely corner here which see how it's about a third of this so it's all just a relationship just check it out and here they painted all this white which is kind of nice for us when it comes to drawing kind of like that now look at what's happening here we're below the horizon line so things are going up so you're going to go up and we're going to see the top of this look at that and now the bottom of this is going to go up to that other horizon line. And now we're going to put in some steps here. And the steps are going to go up starting just a little bit below our horizon line. So it's going to be slightly tipped here. And then the stairs are going to come down. And they're going to come out like this. So this is where I love steps. So then you're going to come in, go up to that, come back, go in, come up to that line, go back, come in, go up to that line, and go back. And see, so each time this line is going to get a little bit straighter until you get to the horizon then it's straight <laughs> now we've got now we get to draw some fun stuff over here if you look there's some kind of rock I love rocks I love all this stuff and this rock here I can see the top of it the edge of this is going to come down I need to drop this a little deeper. Some of the foliage is going to come over this edge. Now keep these lines straight. You notice I sat down. You don't get as good a perspective when you sit down. I should stay standing. And then one of the things I love to do is to just add like little little rocks and little pieces of leaves that have blown up. This is going to be fun to paint. Look at the great cast shadow. Ooh, way too fun. And we're almost done here. We've got this. I don't know how you're supposed to get into that. Wow. Hmm. This sort of goes downhill. Now another thing I like here is there there's some extra foliage in here. So we're going to kind of make up for any areas we don't know what to do with. <laughs> Add some foliage. Been doing that for years. Whenever you don't know what to do, you just add foliage or shadows. So we've got some foliage in here, love that. And then up here I'm going to be building in what's going to be the gate. And then I'll put this bell tower in. Now the bell tower is going to be the highest, so these are going to be a lot steeper up here. Coming down, not too thick. Come in this point here to this point. Now if this was a barn, you'd see that line, but you don't see it here. 
because it's got a, a kind of a nice little face. Now here's one of those deals. When you're trying to figure out where is the center of this point, it's going to be shorter here and longer here. I'll show you how to do that. You draw a line like this, an X, and then you go up through this point. And see that's going to be this side and this side. Nice. And we barely see the top of this. And we do have to put a little cross in here too. And now here's another one of those areas. I'm just going to make it all kind of foliage in here. There's some foliage happening up here. We've got the edge of the roof line here, which is going to be kind of thick. We can't actually see the top of that roof line. Now this is kind of interesting too. There's a little point here coming down. This line goes up and comes down a little higher. Lower. This needs to be a little steeper. So now you just keep making adjustments. Like I say, that's what the eraser is for. So we're pretty close. I'm going to do a little bit of refinement to this, and when I come back, we're going to start putting some paint on it. Well, I didn't do a whole bunch to it. I didn't really make any corrections. And if you, it's not perfect, and I never care if it's perfect. And we don't like, we don't like perfection. That's no fun. Now, I do notice, though, that there's one, one area. Just, I just noticed it. And that's this one here probably should be a little steeper but you know what I think I'm gonna leave it if it looks believable I leave it okay this is gonna be similar to our one point perspective so I'm going to just quickly go through this and then I'm gonna do something I haven't done yet and that is I'm gonna show you how I do my foliage so we'll just quickly go through this part so we can come up to the foliage then later I'm gonna show you how I would put in a dark blue sky like that ooh fun so you'll remember the combination, Windsor Orange, Cobalt Blue, and I just put lots of water. If I want it warmer, I put more of the orange. If I want it cooler, I put more of the blue. So I leave it in a puddle like this, and then I just simply try to get the right value, and I just go for it. So we'll start at the back, and we'll come in with some nice grays here. And like the whole front of this building is in gray. And I think I almost want it warmer. I'm going to put just a little bit of that orangey color in it. And we'll just pull this through as quickly as we can. Sometimes I'll just charge a little bit of that color into it. It looks so nice. So this is going to turn into shapes very quickly. I love it. Now when we get to the foliage we're just going to do little broken shapes. That's how we like to do it. That same color would bookend over here. And again, I'm just going to charge in a little bit of that orange. And then over here, it starts to get a little more fun. See how we're starting to get some cast shadows here. Ooh, I love that. That's the best part. Now the sun's on this side. All right. And it's quite a bit darker along this inner... Um, would be across from this. So that's even darker. Now the front of this, this is that to me that unusual, I don't get it here. This is a taint area. I don't I don't really know what to do with it. It's a little bit cooler here, darker. 
I want it to be a little bluer. So I'm going to hold my finger on the area that I'm looking at. And steps are always fun. Now unfortunately there's so much going on on these steps, it's just more or less dappled light. But usually you have the whole front of the step in one color and the whole top of the step another color. But that's okay. Every now and then I like to charge in more of the blue, more of the orange. We're looking to get just a little variety here. Now we have the dappled light coming over the steps. I frequently do dappled light like this. I'll just take and throw some down to get the broken shapes. And then you have to remember that the shadows follow the shape of the steps. So I need to add more color here. So it's much darker here, but there's little broken shapes of color going on. So we're just going to kind of do that dappled light little broken shapes. And we do want it quite a bit darker in here to pop out this side. This needs to be even darker yet. Yeah, you just keep adjusting these. They're never quite right. It's a little bit darker up here. This has got a little shadow under it. Now we want to pick up a similar color in the front here. Again, I'm going to charge in a little bit of that. When I get full sun, I like to charge in that more orangey color representing the sun. And then when I'm over here in the shadow area, I put more cool. This area here, it's a little white there. A little cooler over here, I'm going to put a little more blue in it. And again, little broken shapes. Now the best part is coming up, and that's these shapes here on the ground. Oh, I love that. So we're going to go a little bit cooler down here. Not quite as dark here. A little lighter. Just a little bit lighter here. Now this whole area is all in shadow. Now this is full sun, so we're just going to leave that white. And there's actually a few little cast shadows on this edge coming down. A few little cast shadows here. This is in shadow. Okay, here's the best part. The cast shadows right here. So I'm just mostly going to do it by throwing the paint. It's going to give me a lot of these lovely little spots. And then I'm just going to move in. And you can see the value's got to be darker. Quite dark. 
They're little broken leaf-like shapes. Oh, so fun. There are also more shapes. And there's all kinds of stones and everything in, in this is just a parking lot. So really, if, if it goes somewhere else, don't worry about it. Give it a try. The important thing is to get it not a straight line. Try to get it to go in and out. Now we're coming, there's more light over here. So now this is going to be not as dark as this. It's all about value change. It's a little darker. This side's a little darker. This side's a little darker. So you just push and pull until you get some nice value changes. Again, we've got some lovely broken shapes here. Now very often you have to come back and do it again. You didn't get it right the first time. So you just keep going back until you get, get some nice value changes. I'm going to go to a smaller brush now, mix up a little quinacridone burnt orange, French ultramarine blue. That is just a great color for making a black. It takes a lot of the blue to make it black. And then we're going to come in and add in these real dark darks. So we've got the inside here. And we've got a very dark inner here, a little bit of dark up here, and we could put in a few little darks along here. And then eventually this is all going to be painted very dark. And the bottom of this is really dark. So it's amazing what these few little darks will do to um, really pull it together. The frosting on the cake. I really enjoy doing this with my pen. So it's usually all done then. So I'm going to do that other extra stuff a little bit later. Right now I want to start showing you how to do the foliage. The foliage is my favorite thing. 
Okay, now you can come in and do a few little areas that need a little adjusting. Like this needs to be just a little bit darker over here. Broken shapes. And then I'm just going to lose this edge into the top because it's getting the sun up there. Just need it to be a little bit darker. I just love this gray. Manipulating the grays. A little bit of gray in there. Oh, here's one I forgot right here. In between some of the foliage, we've got another corner here. So see, those are like book ending. I like to get the same colors here, the same colors here. Now we're ready to throw some paint. And believe me, this is really fun. I'm going to clean this up. Now when I do foliage, what I like to do is start with the brightest yellow. And this is my oriental brush. It's made from some kind of a squirrel, I think. And it's a natural fiber, so it releases the paint. So what I'm going to do is make some puddles now of the brightest yellow I use. And I could use either Areolan or Windsor. And then I'm going to use Quinacridone Gold. And sometimes it's faster to activate these if we just simply dampen them with my sprayer. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to use those three. I'll get them good and wet. So this is the Quin Gold. Beautiful, beautiful color. And then we have Quinacridone Burnt Orange. And that is an incredible color. And for my base, I'm going to use Antwerp Blue. This is a transparent color that's a liftable color, not staining. It wants to be green. It's got a little yellow in it. It's one of the best colors there is. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to my oriental brush and I'm going to start here right in my focal area. And my paper is dry. This is important. Paper has to be dry. So I'm just going to with a downward motion and a tapping. See how I'm holding the brush in the middle about? Pick up the paint in a downward motion. I just let it fly off into these little puddles on a dry paper so it's dry in between all those. Then I'm going to take some quinacridone gold and I'm going to put a little quinacridone gold in here. Now you'll notice the quinacridone gold gives me smaller puddles. <laughs> I've got a few all over. We don't care. We like those. We like that paint all over the place. One of the things when you're trying to do this, you frequently will get smaller puddles. When that happens, you dip your brush into water and then you tap, tap it with that extra water on your brush. Now comes the exciting part. I'm going to start throwing some pure Antwerp blue into this. And it's the same thing. I just tap it in. It joins those colors and it starts to form the greens. Absolutely very exciting. Downward motion and tap. Now don't get any ideas about tapping it against your finger because then it goes everywhere. As it is, it's kind of going everywhere. I don't mind though. I honestly don't mind. So I'm just going to now come in. And this time I'm going to mix a little of this blue with the quinacridone burnt orange. And see the beautiful, beautiful dark green here. And you can see those on that color mixing chart. These are all on there. 
And so what I'm going to do here where it's darker, I'm going to come in with this darker color and just establish this as a nice negative shape right next to these rocks. There's a little bit in here. Come around, there's a little bit down here. And meanwhile, I'm popping out the shape of that rock. It's a negative. Right around the corner here. And it's a combination of these two. It's very dark up here too. It's very dark in here. So I'm looking for those darkest darks right now. And see, I'm not throwing the paint now. I'm just I'm designing it to go where I want it. And I'm still leaving some little holes. I think what I'll do is move in a little closer so you can see this a little better. There. So we have the foliage here. And what I'm trying to do now is negative paint around these shapes. So the shapes pop out and then I'm just going to get this foliage where I want it. This is fun. And I'm doing it all with this little oriental brush. Overlapping the sidewalk. Oh, we like that. And now as I come around here, it's going to define all this negative painting defines these shapes. And we'll even come down here. We'll say something grew up down here. And now you can see that this foliage goes right up and overlaps this. So we're just going to come in here and it's all very dark. This is all happening in the shadow. So it's just a matter of just drawing it in with the paint. That's why I didn't do a lot of drawing with my pencil. The plan was just to come in with the paint and let it happen. Love these renegades. <laughs> Lots of Antwerp, a little bit of Quimper and Orange. Can you see what's happening? As I'm dragging out the yellows, I'm getting some lighter greens. I love it. I want it to look like the sun is touching the top here. Okay, now there's some very strong darks in here. So we'll just play with that a little bit. It's much darker down here. The last thing I like to do is to warm this up a little bit. So I'm actually going to take some of this pure quinacridone burnt orange on my brush and I'm just going to do a little tap, tap with that pure orange. And I'm just going to let it find, it find its own way and it'll give it a nice little warm touch. So I'm just going to go ahead now and tap, tap again. I pick up all the paint I can. I just load this brush. Hold it in the middle, a downward motion, and a tap. Tap, 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 tap. 
And the first color I almost always start with is my brightest sun color. I usually have a tissue in hand in case I manage to go where I don't want it. So I'm definitely thinking about the sun here. It's very sunny. When I get close to a wall that I don't want color all over it, I'll just tap it with my brush. But see, this is all dark down here. I don't worry about that. I'm just trying to, at this point, I'm just catching the sun. And then I always want to enrich it with the quinacridone gold. And a tap, tap, tap. And very often with the gold, you get these smaller little dots. So I put, what I do then is I have water. I put my brush in the water with the paint in it. I give it one tap, and then I come back and see how you can make those little puddles bigger. It's nice. Now I'm going to come in with just the Antwerp blue. There we go. Not doing a good job today. What's going on? <laughs> I'm getting it all over. Well, I'm just going to dab it up. I did want those kind of clean. Okay, now we have the same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this painting this section. to define the fence. If you look carefully, there's some lights over here. So if I just come in here and carefully leave a few lights in a straight line, it'll give the illusion that I'm going to be reserving light against the dark and dark against the light. That'll be fun. This should be really dark, so I'm going to really darken it up a bit here. You don't want a lot of detail in areas like this. Just more or less suggestion. So I'm not going to do a lot of detail. Just do a little bit more. Oh yeah. See just that little suggestion of the white? That's really nice. You could mask it, but you know what? I wouldn't like it masked as well as I do like this. A little more irregular. Looks like it was painted by a human being. See, not much detail in here. This is distance, 
we just want it very simple. Now we only, the only foliage left is down in this corner. It's all very dark. No shadow. I mean, sorry, no light. It's all shadow. So again, very simplistic. We're just going to come in here. Show a little bit of pattern so it looks like foliage. But it's just going to be dark, all dark, no tricolor here. So now I'm going to just throw in, see how this is just a little bit warmer? I'm going to come in here with a color I haven't used so far, but one I use a lot on these European areas. This was a funny little back root. We were in Athens, in the Plaka, and that's what this was, just a neat little place way up the hill. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to throw some raw sienna. This is a beautiful, beautiful earthy yellow. And see, it can even go over that shadow. But I wanted to throw it like this, in this direction. And then I'm just going to run my brush. I'm still using this brush. want to get some broken shapes, especially out here in the sun. Wouldn't hurt if this got a little bit grayer. Just happen to have some dark there. So again, I'm just going to run this brush over it, get some little broken shapes of white, some little broken shapes of yellow, and just get a nice, nice little tonal wash on here. I like that. Now we've got a little bit of nice warm here, cool, warm, and when this is absolutely bone dry, sneak over here, <laughs> when this is absolutely bone dry tomorrow, I'm going to come back and paint in the blue sky. It's really going to pop it. And in the meantime, all I'm going to do is paint in a few darks here to indicate the wrought iron and the blue sky, and we're done. Well, I'm at the fun part now. I do have this mixture here of my very, very dark green. And I'm, I, I'm really pleased with the way the light, you know, turned out on these, on the foliage here. You really feel the glisten of that bright yellow and the gold and the blue. I mean, they each, you can see their identity and it looks great. Now. For fine tuning, I might do something like this, where I would come in and just do a little bit of dark, negative painting, just to pop out like the side of this steeple here. I like to do things like that. That little bit, doesn't that help? And you can see I was in here just doing a little bit of dark in between the fencing and identifying the edge here 
popping it out just a little darker. Now I could do just a little bit more dark over here. Just a little, not, not too much. But it's just nice to have a few of these edges a little bit darker. And I probably would just soften some of this so it kind of melts in there. Then I just wanted to show you, you can take, if you, if you have some sloppy edges, you can just take a half inch flat brush. This one is a fabulous. Wet it, wipe it until it's just damp. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll just come in here and soften this edge a bit so you can just clean it up. Yeah, better. And then I could do the same up here too. I could just come in and kind of smooth this edge out a little bit. It's hard to get it perfect the first time. So I don't worry about it because I know I can come back later. Almost every single color that I've used here is a lifting color. So and that you you just can't believe how wonderful that is. When you have colors that lift and you want to get rid of all these little spots that I spilled all over, I could actually just with the damp brush come in and any of these spots I don't like, I could just fuss and pick them up because they're all almost all non-staining colors. Thing is, I like all those little spots, so I don't I don't have any big plans to clean them up, but I usually clean up a few of them. Um, I did darken the shadow a little bit, and I, I, dar I straightened out this edge and darkened that, and I have one last thing to do. I'm going to use my little number one brush, and this is like the last, final, death-defying act here. I'm going to take my quinacridone burnt orange with French ultramarine blue, more French ultramarine blue, that's going to make it very dark. And you can see I painted the door, but I saved these. And I purposely painted these so I had these little white shapes in here. So what I'm going to do now is paint the dark shapes. But I'm going to stop when I get to the white shapes. So this is really cool. I'm going to build the fence a little differently than it is, but nobody will get too excited. So I'm just going to put in this dark fence. Amazing how these little details just pop everything. So I'm going to make it dark up here, but I'm going to leave it light down here. Dark here, leave it light. And it really, really looks nice. Oh, love that. It doesn't take that long. See, if you just have all hard, dark shapes, I don't know. It's not as good. This is better. So every time I get to a light shape, I just stop. I just put it here, a little bit here. And almost done. And then our crossbar. Yeah, it's a little, little clumsy, but I always like it when it's not perfect. Oh yeah, there's another one down here. Again, I can miss start and stop. Now, the real fun is going to be the sky. And for that, I do need to clean off clean this up a bit. Now I'm only going to use one color and that's going to be French ultramarine blue. First thing I'm going to do is wet and I'm going to come in just close to the edge I don't, and just close to my foliage and see when I have something that putsy I just sort of come close there too so I love working with the wet the reason is I'm not going to make my sky this flat all the way up to the top 
I'm going to make it dark here, and as I go up to the top, I'm going to go back to the white of the paper. So by wetting this first, that gives me that option to have that nice, soft sky. There. Okay, so now coming in with a brush that's easy to manage. This is about a size 6. I could probably go a little bigger. Here we go. Now I need a bigger brush. I'm going to go to this one. This is about a size 10. Yeah, that's more like it. Now I want to get enough water that I'm, it's going to be dark, but it's not going to be too dark. And see, now is when I'm going to be careful about getting close to the edge. And see how this color can just do its thing. We have to paint the little holes in between. And if a little goes on it, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And see, I want, I just want that light top. So now I'm going to come in here and pop this out. Wow, this is always so fun to do. And I'll probably do a little, see this counter motion going like this, and then there's one here. So I just, I'm always trying to do the opposite. Now this is a little more picky. I want to get around the cross. So now we can look at it like this and decide how far up we want to go. I frequently like to tip it and let the color build up a little bit too. Well, that makes quite a difference. I like it. So we'll just build it up a little darker here, close to the building. And it's so wet, we can do that. We can just put this color in and let it flow. And then we have to let it flow back again. And now I'm going to decide how much of this I'm going to touch off. I especially like to have a little little bit of this dark kind of flowing through here. So we're just going to let this run a little bit. One of the things I like about French Ultramarine Blue is the granulation. And you can see it happening. The wetter it is, the more it granulates. So I really like that look. Yep, that might be it. Simple. It's a nice, simple ending. Now if I had a color here that I wanted to accent, such as French ultramarine or some pinks or something I'd put a little bit in the sky but this this doesn't have anything it's all green and white with that touch of blue so I think I'm just gonna leave it like this let's go just a little bit darker just 
just have to be patient. Tip and turn. Well, there you have it. This was one of my most difficult lessons, and I'm actually pretty pleased with it. I didn't think we'd, I'd enjoy painting it this much. So this is the lesson that really provides you with the two-point perspective. And as a bonus DVD, I've also enclosed this. I love this. So you can see we're starting with the same idea that we did here. We, we create the grays, but on this one, to make it look like old world France, I've charged in some warm colors, warm and cool. So this one I'm going to be teaching and focusing on temperature. The temperature of the color, in other words, is it warm or cool? And we're also going to be focusing on value, and that has to do with the dark to light. And I've also included another lesson this is incredible this was a 2500 year old village that I visited and this was perfect because it had gold walls so I did the under shadows in permanent magenta it had an orange door so I did the shadows under here in cobalt blue and this this is just another way that you can do the layering where you start with the shadows and then you end up with the warm colors so in this one, you'll get the underpainting, the finished painting. This is how the kits operate. And then you get the actual photograph to look at. So two bonus lessons in this one. Good luck.